Hey guys, welcome to Harrison Yaks. This episode is going to be featuring the mini consoles, what's good, what's bad, what's coming. Stay tuned. Welcome to Harrison Hacks. Hey guys, Harrison Hacks here for an episode of Harrison Yaks. Uh, welcome to my little living room that I have kind of built in my garage right now. Uh, this is obviously a new show to my channel, so the first thing I want to talk about is something that I really care about. I don't know if you can see in the background here, but I've got some mini consoles set up. I've got the Sega, a couple Playstations, and the NES Classic. I also have the Commodore 64 as well as the SNES Classic, uh, but those are not out here at the moment. Um, I want to talk about the good, bad, the ugly, everything in between, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure we'll have a difference of opinion. You know, some folks won't agree with what I think or what I'm saying. But I'm going to go ahead and roll with this anyways. This is a little bit different than most of my videos. And as far as I might drop an F-bomb here or there, uh, you know, and things like that. So I'm going to put a discretion at, at, at each... Um, intro of a Harrison Yaks video because once I start talking because I talk off the cuff like I don't have any you know bullet points behind the camera I, I'm just it's all up here and that's kind of where I want to come at when I have conversations because uh, I like to be upfront and honest I'm, I'm not going to say anything to you guys just because I'm like well that's what they'll enjoy you know that's just that's not me I'm very uh, blunt I'm very open and honest and I want to discuss the mini consoles with you guys and just in this episode I'll move on to other topics in future episodes uh, but this one we will focus on the minis so I'll start with that games um, I won't to touch too much on them basically we all know that the quality is subpar with at games um, I have heard some good things about the newest revision of the Sega Genesis flashback HD and that's cool you know, if, if it's good and people like it, go for it. Um, I don't. I know it has a cartridge slot, limited, you know, compatibility and all that stuff. It's a system on a chip. Uh, but I wouldn't buy it. Uh, when you can go and get the official Sega Genesis Mini with official three-button controllers, you can get, you know, retro bit, but Sega as well. Uh, official six-button, eight-button. They even have wireless now. So, I mean, you've got a lot of options if you go the route of the official Sega Genesis Mini. Um, so, in my opinion, the at game stuff is out. Actually, I've heard the Atari ones are pretty good, too. I would like to see a bit of a better design with the Atari ones. You know, have switches instead of big yellow plastic buttons. I'm not a fan of that look, but the actual console itself looks pretty cool. Other than those, uh, those buttons. Um, as far as, you know, we move on to the NES Classic... NES is my favorite console of all time to this day. Uh, the controller is my favorite controller. The console is my favorite console, and it's got a ton of different games that I just thoroughly enjoy. And Nintendo brought that out. Um, we'll talk about the good. It looks amazing. Um, I, I won't reach for it. It's back there, but uh, it does. It does look amazing. It functions supremely well. The background music is cool. The UI inside is cool. The controllers feel legit. Um, could have had longer cords, right? So, you know, but they they even said, like, hey, this was like a transition from the Wii U flopping into the Switch and we had nothing to put out. So they just threw it out there, not knowing the demand that they would actually have for those systems. Because I remember hunting and hunting and hunting to get some. Um, and it was very difficult to get. What was even harder to get was the extra controller, because it only came with one controller, which was a negative. Um, now, they did give us a poster, and they also gave us a power brick, which we'll talk about some consoles later uh, regarding the, the, the dreadful power brick. Um, and then they came out with the SNES Classic, which is a phenomenal, uh, you know, just as high quality as the NES Classic. Uh, very similar system, you know, uh, similar look and feel. Other, I mean, aesthetically, no, it looks like the Super Nintendo. They did an amazing job. Um, and the one thing with those two consoles is they're super easy to hack so you can put on the games that you want to have on there and that you enjoy. So I really like that aspect of it. Um, at first, you know, I was like, oh, RetroArch and I can play all these other games and so on and so forth. Uh, with my NES Classic, I've added a little bit. So I put NES, two-button arcade games, uh, TurboGrafx-16 games, as well as Sega Master System games. And there's Game Boy and Game Boy Color on there. I don't play those too much. But 
Anything with two buttons I threw on that console just because, hey, why not? It's my favorite controller and it'll play those games perfectly. Um, so the SNES Classic, you know, that's one where I just, you, you can't fit the whole library, but it does fit a ton of games. I mean, I've got most of my favorites on there and you can do OTG storage with the mods so that you can have more space and more games, which is just awesome. But as far as like, you know, it coming stock, Again, you get a poster, you get an amazing looking box, um, and the controllers feel perfect. They give us two controllers on the SNES. Now the cords were still a little short, but a little bit longer. So it was a step in the right direction. I mean, I got some extension cables. I also got 8-BitDo DIY Bluetooth kits, which I really like as well. Um, and then there was the big hype. And even I bought into this, and, and I can't believe that I did, but I just really want it, and I think a lot of us do. The N64 Classic Edition. Now, it's not a thing, but I do want to touch on it a little bit, a little bit here. So, you know, the N64 Classic, I can totally understand why they wouldn't make it um, emulate. It's harder to emulate, definitely, so you're going to need some more horsepower under the hood. Uh, as far as the controllers, I'm pretty sure they're they're rather expensive to produce, um, you know, in comparison to an SNES or an NES controller. Um, but that being said, you know, because you would have to have bigger packaging, the SNES box and the NES Classic box were the same size. Uh, the N64 box would have to be much larger, especially if they were to, to include two controllers with that system. Um, but the, I just feel like it's a missed opportunity if they don't do it, and here's why. So, you'll sell the console like hotcakes. You'll also sell separate controllers, because if you have four ports and you include two controllers, or even if you only included one because they're so large, people are going to go and buy at least one more, possibly two to three more. If you did the the colors, you know, all the color variants that they had. Um, I believe it was fantastic. I want to say that's what it was, but uh, I, I'm, I love the mini consoles. I collect them. So if there was a bunch of different versions of the N64, you know, color wise, I'd go get them all. I'd have two blacks, one to play. The rest of the colors would be in the boxes because I'm a collector. I like to collect them. But even people only looking to buy one system would go out and look for that specific color that they want, whether it be the jungle green or the transparent orange or so on and so forth. You could even do it with the, the secondary controllers that you purchase individually. You could put all those different colors and things like that. If you had an, a Pikachu edition mini, I mean, wow, you know, that would be something that would be phenomenal uh, maybe on that particular edition you include the an extra game you know a Pikachu game or something uh, but honestly the N64 classic I think would be a huge hit and I know people will say well, well we won't get GoldenEye probably not because of licensings and all that kind of stuff it's probably a nightmare with all the licensing you'd have to do to get that game but I mean, there's so many other great games for the N64. Yes, we would lose out on GoldenEye. More than likely, you know, it would get modded and you would just put GoldenEye on there. Anyways, and you're off and running. So I think an N64 Classic Edition is something Nintendo should do. I feel as though they're going to incorporate it somehow into the Nintendo Switch uh, and kind of do the emulation on there because then they don't have to produce... Um, the console itself and all the packaging for it and so on and so forth so we'll see where nintendo goes but i just for me i think that you would hit a lot of check check boxes if you release the n64 classic edition um especially if you did it with the multiple colors we'll move on to the playstation classic uh it is the most powerful classic edition released however um sony really dropped the ball so I'm under, I understand that they wanted to release it with the original controllers that came with the original PlayStation 1. Totally, totally get it. So I'm fine with that. But that limits our gameplay. It limits what game options you can put on the console. Now, I feel like they just rushed the game selection on the console. Um, they just didn't choose all of the best ones. I think they were like, oh, well, you got Final Fantasy VII. People love that game. 
but we didn't have Crash Bandicoot, we didn't have Spyro the Dragon, we didn't have uh, Tomb Raider, you know, and things like that. Uh, a lot. Some of the games were the PAL region games that don't even run full speed. The emulator itself, it just it didn't feel quite right. They just kind of grabbed it off the shelf and was like, well, this will have to do. Uh, they came out with a crazy price point here in Canada. It was $129.99. Um, and they didn't even include a power brick, which, you know, I understand. Oh, everybody's got power bricks. And people say that all the time. Well, guess what? When I'm paying that kind of dough... I want a power brick. I want to be able to buy the PlayStation Classic. Everything inside connects it up for me so that I can enjoy it. That's how I want to spend my money. Um, as far as, you know, short cords. Yeah, it's got short cords as well. Totally cool. Uh, USB, which I thought was nice. And they even put the little ends on the USB plug that goes into the console. So it looks like the controller being plugged in. Um, but again, it, you know, the emulation wasn't tweaked to be better. Um, and the games list sucks. Now, again, we modded it and, and, and all this other stuff. You've, you've got Auto Bleam or Bleam Sync, uh, Retro Boot, and all that good stuff. I mean, I've got an internal Retro Arch mod on mine. Uh, but again, I just did all that tinkering, and now you know what it is? It's back to the, the I feel like I've got 22 games on my system internally. Uh, modded that's it I just put PlayStation games back on there that's what I play uh, I like to use a PlayStation 3 controller wireless with it um, I'm not saying they should have included wireless controllers but maybe made DualShock controllers an option um, and then we'll move into the Sega Genesis Mini I feel like Sega went all out on this like I don't know if they were more excited than we were that the Sega Genesis Mini was a thing like because they they released the Sega Genesis Mini. They gave us a ton of good games. Plus two bonus games. Tetris and... Uh, I can't believe... Darius. I almost forgot that. Uh, they gave us the original three-button controllers. I like the three-button controllers. I understand, you know... Well, you can't play Street Fighter with it. You can, but it's a pain in the butt. But they have other options. At least you can go buy the six-button controllers. You can buy eight-button controllers. You can buy wireless controllers. Um, they have the Tower of Power, you know, that you can get. And then there was some North American ones that some people got. It wasn't retail sold. Um, that I want one so bad. Like, if they retail those, I will buy it. Uh, but they do have the Japanese Mega Drive one. And I think it's, it's so cool. And the little bit of details. You open up the Sega CD... Uh, mini and you know they have the board in there just a picture cut out of a board but still a nice little feature I feel like Sega was super excited to do this um, when they first announced it they were they were teaming up with at games again and they listened and they got rid of at games and they went uh, they got m2 to do the emulation you know and and I, I keep up with with project lunar and to be honest with you um, it's looking like good things when that hack gets released. It's been a bit, but you know what? It's a lot of work. I mean, it, it really is a lot of work. Um, so I can completely understand why the, the hack hasn't been released yet. But once it does release, then there we go. We're off and running. You you know, at some point, we're going to get Emulation Station as a front end. That's how I'm going to do it. I mean, my Sega Genesis Mini will have an Emulation Station front end guaranteed. But I don't see why the official stock UI, you know, why people wouldn't enjoy that as well. It's a good stock UI. You know, honestly, with the Sega Genesis Mini, a couple double button presses, but only on the menu for some reason. I don't know why that is. Um, my 8-button controller works great. And I, I'm looking forward to getting some of the, uh, the wireless ones that Retrobit and Sega have released. But the Sega Genesis Mini, to me, nice packaging. The console itself looks phenomenal. It functions great. It's, you know, they did a really good job. I feel like Sony dropped the ball. Sega picked it up and ran with it. Um, Nintendo started it all. I mean, they, you know, with, with quality, you know, official minis, they did. And there's been some other ones, you know, there's com the C64 Mini, um, it's okay, joystick issues people have with them breaking easily and stuff like that, it's cool, I bought it because I want to collect them, I'm not, I'm not, uh, 
I'm not going to go crazy about the Commodore 64 Mini. I think it's cool. And I think I paid about 40 bucks Canadian, and that's kind of where I feel comfortable, which is funny because my PlayStation Minis were like $29.99 Canadian. Um, and then there's the Neo Geo Mini and so on and so forth, the, the Capcom, you know, uh, home arcade and stuff like that. Uh, but the one coming in March of 2020, the TurboGrafx 16 slash PC Engine Mini. Aesthetically, from the photos and the videos, it looks amazing. I hope the controllers are just as good as the originals. I I have nothing but good things to say about my experience playing TurboGrafx games. I think there's a lot of great games for that console. I think they rushed it as well. And I feel like it's a cash grab. And I know people argue this because they probably just they love Konami or, the, or they love the PC Engine or the TurboGrafx. But, you know, hear me out. One controller included. They want a hundred U.S. dollars. You get one controller. You have to buy a power brick. You have to buy an extra controller if you want to play two players. I can totally understand the multi-tap and buying three extra controllers because you get up to five. I completely understand that. I totally get it. But I think at this stage in the game that every mini console should come with two controllers and a power brick. I mean, I really do, especially when you're asking 100 US dollars. The game lineup for the Turbo Graphics Mini looks decent, but I, I mean, why did they cram all the Japanese and North American releases all in the same spot? I just, I don't understand it. So that's kind of where I'm at with the Turbo Graphics Mini, the PC Engine Mini, whichever one. Um, I won't buy it unless it goes on sale. I, I, I honestly, I, I just can't see myself spending, I think it'd be about 130 Canadian plus tax. Then I've got to buy a controller and a power brick. Well, I could use one I already have, but I just don't see it. If it doesn't, if it doesn't go on sale, I, I won't be purchasing that one um, because I just feel like Konami's out to just grab some cash. And I, I hope the emulation is good. I hope the controllers feel great. I mean, I'm not knocking it because I've never tried it. I'm just saying personally for me, I don't think I'm going to buy that one unless it goes on sale for a really good price. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for me. Uh, this is the first episode of Harrison Yaks. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and let me know in the comments if you want me to do more episodes, maybe some topics you'd like me to discuss, so on and so forth. And what do you think about mini consoles? What's your take on all of them as a whole or any individually? So, you know guys. Have a good day.